Blog Talk Radio. Paranormal Review Radio. Special edition of Paranormal Review Radio. I'm Anthony Agati in New York City, and my co-host in her new home in Chicago is Lucy Liefried. Say hello, Lucy. Hi, Anthony. I am so excited. Can we get started? Yes. We're going to try and do something that has never been done before. We're going to conduct a live interview with the famous Wanda Kay, DJ and tour guide to one of the most haunted places on Earth. Bobby Mackey's Music World. What's never been done is the fact that we will be with Wanda Kay as she is working the stage and the dance floor in front of a live, full house. We talked to Wanda earlier this week to confirm, and she mentioned that Bobby Mackey's PR manager was all for this and that we probably would be the first and last to do this. That's what's going to make this show even more special. Lucy, why don't we give our listeners a quick history of Bobby Mackey's Music World so when we're interviewing Wanda, they will get some understanding of the place. And we're going to give Wanda a call a little bit later, probably in about 10 or 15 minutes or so. So go ahead, Lucy, go ahead. Sounds good. Okay, this building was originally built on this site. It was a slaughterhouse in the 1850s. The sealed well in the basement in the current building was used to wash away the refuse from the animals and other sinister sinister activities. It is commonly thought that after the slaughterhouse moved, it was suspected that the basement of this now abandoned building was used for occult worship, using animal and human sacrifices. Um, Sacrifices were made back to the devil. Now, the abandoned slaughterhouse was eventually torn down, but a speakeasy and an illegal gambling joint run by the mob was built on the same plot of land in the 1920s. In the 1930s, Buck Brady bought this operation. He called it Primrose, making it into a successful above-board casino and bar. The mob, of course, wanted to take it over and wound up forcing Buck Brady out, who killed himself in the end. The building then was reopened as a mob-controlled Latin music nightclub. They called it the Latin Quarter, and it began its long history of being a place for musical entertainment, even though shady people were running the place. The wall space by the stage still has pictures of dancing Latina women hanging there. Now, the illegal gambling continued off and on throughout the 1940s and 50s, until the police finally finally put the gambling operation completely out of business when they took out all the machines in 1955. On the positive side, the building itself has a very long history of being a music hall and is the longest continuing music promoter of local artistic talent in the Cincinnati area. Other music bars moved into the building over the years. In the early 1970s, it became the Hard Rock Cafe, but it was closed down after some fatal shootings on the property. Bobby Mackey, an accomplished recording country music artist himself, bought the property in 1978, continuing to offer music entertainment. While it's a funky-looking wooden structure, which has seen better days, it is a beloved spot to gather to hear country music, entertainment for both the living and the entities that live there. Now, on the weekends, the patrons are treated to Bobby Mackey and his band's music. People seeking ghosts and paranormal experience also love to visit the building as well. Anthony, do we have time to talk about the haunted claims? Yeah, I think so. Let me quickly go through some of them, and if I have to stop to call Wanda, just interrupt me, Lucy, okay? Okay. 
Bobby Mackey's Music World is thought to be the most haunted nightclub in the bar and bar in the United States. Because of its bloody inserted history, one can see why. There was a sign there was a sign actually posted on the door warning its patrons about the possibility of paranormal activity and to enter at their own risk. There are many possible sources for this unique gathering of ghostly company who can be rather rowdy. People and animal, animals were actually sacrificed to the devil in the basement. Murder victims from the speakeasy, illegal gambling operations, and the recent 1970 shootings still occupy the building, wanting justice or aren't ready to move on just yet. Entities of Pearl, Scott Jackson, and Alonzo Walling. Three ghosts are connected to a rather gruesome incident. In southern Indiana, a young woman by the name of Pearl fell in love with a dental student, Scott Jackson, who was rumored to be an occultist, a satanic worshiper who was a member of the Slaughterhouse Satanic Cult. When she became pregnant, Jackson and a medical student, Alonzo Walling, drugged her sarsaparilla drink with cocaine when she refused to have an abortion. She thought that Scott Jackson would marry her. They tried to perform an abortion on the drugged Pearl, who was then five months pregnant, but failed. Scott Jackson and Alonzo Walling did the next best thing in their twisted thinking, it is thought. Since they didn't have the dead fetus, they decapitated poor Pearl while she was still alive, for there were signs of struggling and lots of blood at the crime scene. Popular legend says that they used her head in a satanic ritual, and it was dropped down the well in the basement of the slaughterhouse. Pearl's body was found not far from the abandoned slaughterhouse. Others say Scott Jackson and Alonzo Walling disposed of her head at the dentistry school in the incinerator in the basement. Scott and, Al Scott and Alonzo were caught, tried, and hung for their horrific crime. They were offered life in prison instead of, instead of the hangman's noose if they said their, where the head was located. But they said they were innocent of her murder, not willing to confess their deeds. Others think that they didn't want to suffer at the hands of the devil. They may be haunting Bobby Mackey's music world not because they were satanic worshippers, but because they died of a slow strangulation over a 10-minute period. They blame Pearl and are haunting her as her spirit found this building appealing, which was the nearest place where she died. The entity of Buck Brady, as Lucy was talking about before, who was the Cincinnati mob, of course, wanted to take over the Primrose and wound up making life rough for Buck Brady until they finally forced him to sell his business to them. He actually eventually uh, committed suicide. The entity of a little girl died in this building somehow, perhaps as an accident. And another famous story of the entity of Johanna, who is the daughter of a Latin Quarter owner. She fell in love with a singer at the club and became pregnant. Hmm. Her father had her beloved had, had her beloved murdered. At five months pregnant, she poisoned her father and then killed herself in the basement. Lucy, actually, um, since we have some time, um, not too long ago, actually earlier this week, I was watching. A, um, a YouTube video of a show called A Haunting, and I can't remember actually what channel it was on. But it was actually interesting. It was a documentary, a ghostly documentary on Bobby Mackey's. And some of the information that they talked about, I had never known about. Um, I don't think it was talked, or if it was, I just don't remember from the tours that we did at Bobby Mackey's. But um, there were some interesting actual stories from the show, and I just wanted to share a couple of them. And I'm not sure if you know any of them as well, so uh, if you give me a few minutes, I just wanted to go over them. Sure. One of which, okay, one of which was, um, and it was a documentary basically uh, uh, with Bobby Mackey himself. And uh, they actually interviewed his wife and Carl Lawson, who Carl Lawson was sort of the janitor or um, the, the, the maintenance guy, basically, of Bobby Mackey's. When Bobby purchased the, the, um, the place in 1978, uh, Carl Lawson was actually working there prior to Bobby purchasing it and came upon the place again and spoke to Bobby and became another employee under Bobby Mackey when he was opening up his place. And um, right from the start, according to the show, right from the start, there were hauntings to Bobby and his wife. And his wife, Janet, was actually pregnant at the time. And it's funny that in all these ghostly stories, they all have something in common. It seemed as though that all these women were pregnant and they had some sort of 
entity or, or ghostly force attacking them or um, interfering within their lives. And Janet had told a story that when they were, when after they had just purchased the place, they were fixing it up. And Janet was in the kitchen washing the pots and pans and getting the kitchen all scrubbed up when all of a sudden she noticed um, some sort of eerie sounds that were going on in the place and turned around and looked and noticed in, in the sink, the sink started to fill with what she called uh, blood. And the sink started to fill up pretty much all the way. And those kitchen sinks in bars and in restaurants are very deep. They're about two feet deep. They're those steel sinks. And it filled up completely. And all of a sudden she sort of had a pressure on the back of her neck as though it was something was forcing her head down into this bloody bath in the sink. And she, at that time, was, again, like I said, five months pregnant, and she was so distraught and full of fear that uh, she was actually rushed to the hospital because she thought she was going to lose her baby at the time. Um, I didn't know that story, Lucy. Did you know that story? I've actually heard that story once before, but I just can't remember where I heard it. And mm. it really it really just pointed out, it's one of the reasons why um, – Janet won't go back into that club. Right. She actually said that she will never go back to that club. Um, she will never set foot in it. And I think it was maybe a couple of months or six months or so, something like that, around that time frame, when all of this um, activity started to happen to Janet and to Carl Lawson, who I mentioned was the, the janitor of the place. And a couple of things that was odd with Carl Lawson was that, not odd, but um, strange that it sort of um, pointed him out, basically. And a lot of things happened to Carl in the place. He, Carl actually was the one that found Johanna, who I talked earlier about, um, her father who had killed her, her beloved, um, because she got pregnant by him, and then she was so distraught she killed her father and then killed herself. But Carl Lawson actually found Johanna's diary, and it was located in the basement under some floorboards, and that's how we know about the story about Johanna, because she basically kept a really good diary of everything that was going on in her life. And her last entry, it's pretty sad, um, her last entry, Johanna says that she, um, in so many words, basically said that she was going to kill herself, and um, but she had said that she would roam the halls of the place to wait for her lover to return. And to this day, there's actual um, eyewitness accounts and experiences that involve Johanna and hearing Johanna and actually seeing Johanna in the place. And um, just quickly, another um, point that I wanted to make with Carl, um, he was actually the one that actually found the well, which we'll talk about later, that's in the basement of the place. And he found it under a latch door, which he had never known, even when he worked there prior to Bobby owning the place. Um, and Carl was actually later on, possessed by something in the place. But we'll get into that story a little bit later. Um, Lucy, I think we're about ready to call Wanda. Do you think we should call now? Yeah, let's give her a call. All right, so you keep the audience occupied while I try and call the number. Well, just to... to talk about one point that, that Anthony was just talking about, how um, how Joanna is seen in the um, the bar. The first time that we went to Bobby Mackey's, um, I was taking pictures at the end of the night. And one of the pictures, which we'll post on our Facebook page, is of a white mist, and it's right in a doorway that leads to a ladder that goes up to a little secret room where if you've seen the Ghost Adventures episode, where Joanna had written a poem up in this little room. So, hello, Wanda Kay. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Wanda. Well, hi, Lucy and Anthony. How are you? How are, How are you? you? <laughs> We're doing okay. Just Wanda, Bobby thank you. Listening to Bobby play. <laughs> well, thank you so much for allowing us to hang out with you while you work tonight. And, um, if you have to go or do anything like that, just, just let us know, okay? Okay. I got some people helping me out, so I think I got my bases covered, and we should be good. I'm hiding back here in the gift shop. Can you hear the music in the background or not? Sure can. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. Well, I can hear you guys real good over at where I'm at, so we should be okay. Awesome. You know what, Wanda? I really do miss that place. Um, possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, we miss you too. We're waiting for you to come back. Oh, I can't wait to get back there. Um, do you have a good crowd there tonight? Uh, to, to be honest with you, it's a little bit off tonight. I think what's going on is everybody is uh, Christmas shopping tonight since they got their paychecks on Friday, and then we'll be packed tomorrow. Saturday night, you, you're always busting out the walls. Saturday, we usually wind up with maybe three or 400, but it's starting out slow tonight. And then, like I say, Saturday wow. night, uh, it's usually about 600 that will pack through the building, so we'll see how it goes. So we're still having fun. Wow. I've, I've got about... Uh, 10 karaoke singers. We've been singing karaoke since about 8.30. And uh, like I said, Bobby just did take the band. Uh, my lovely assistant, Duke, introduced him for me so I could wait back here for the telephone. <laughs> and oh, we told awesome. everybody out there who we were talking to, so they all think it's kind of neat to keep peeking in the door here at me see what we're talking about. I said, we're talking about ghostesses. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony? <laughs> so, uh, how was Sean Havens last week, Wanda? Oh, awesome. Always. Packs this place all the time. And we got Danny Fraser yeah. coming in tomorrow night, so they'll have to get here early or they won't get a place to park. They wind up lining them up down the road here, clear to the 4th Street Bridge when we get big acts like that. Right. And then next, let me see, next Saturday... That was Danny Frazier tomorrow night. So next Saturday, we're actually having a Christmas jamboree. Um, my granddaughters uh, will be singing here, and i got a, um, it's a cousin of mine, but it, she plays in a band, too. She's won something called the Worldwide Karaoke Contest. But everybody that's singing are uh, very young people, 20s, and some of them are actually te- teenagers that come in, entertain that are from California and different places. So next week will be a new okay. show. That's from uh, 8 to 10, and then Bobby always takes over after 10 o'clock. That's great. That's great. So are there tickets for that, or is there donations or anything? Uh, they just get them here when they, they arrive at the door. It's uh, $5 a person. They're allowed to get in at the age of 18, a uh, half hour before the shows start, but they have to have their ID with it. And um, right. he'll mark them with great big red X's, so when they wake up in the morning, they definitely know where they were, so they, they don't cut <laughs> them a drink. But uh, anybody 21, I think it's $5 for anybody 21 and up. I think it's $10 if they're 18, in between 18 and 21. So okay. how is Miss... How is Miss, <clears throat> Mr. Mackey? Can you tell our listeners what kind of guy Bobby Mackey is? Oh, you say what, how... How he is? Yeah, it will give us a, give our listeners sort of like a um, uh, a little inkling of of how he is, how he's to work for, what kind of guy he is. Oh, uh, you know. okay. Well, let's see. Bobby's been here for 32 years. That most everybody knows that he loves classic, classic country music. He's a very yes. laid back, easy, easy going fella. Um, when he gets up and performs, the uh, crowd always loves what he does. It's uh, like a novelty club here. It's the, the only one in the area where he does uh, classic country music. You can hear it going on in the background. And then when mm-hmm. I get up, I do karaoke and I do line dance music, which is the exact opposite of what he does. But mixed together, these people have a ball. He plays for an hour, then I play for an hour. But uh, he's a very gracious man and very, very nice and very easy to work with. I. When I, I remember when I first started working for him about eight, nine years ago, um, we had a conversation back and forth as to what he expected of me and, and what I expected. And I told him, I said, well, I, uh, I like to work for people who tell me what they want, how they want it done, and then you turn me loose and let me do my job. You have my pay for right. me at the end of the night, and I love it. And that's exactly the way it's been for, <laughs> for several years. I said, uh, once in a blue moon when we're here at work, do I really get the chance to talk to him? Because when he's on stage, I'm on break and and vice versa. But but, uh, he's a a very nice man. He had um, recently remarried um, this past summer. And his his wife is a very, very nice lady, too. I love working for them both. 
That's great. I doesn't believe in the ghost, though. He's all, all I, yeah, I know that. I know. He <laughs> doesn't believe in the ghost. Don't want any part of that. Well, Wanda, speaking of ghosts, so with all the reported activity that happened in there, you know, I do have a question. How are you still working there? <laughs> Very carefully and one day at a time. <laughs> I love it. You got you guys know that. I've been around it since I've been about six years old, so you get used to it. But um uh that's not to say that there have been times that my heart's been in my mouth and I've been ready to run out the door. Right. Um I, I've learned to not let them see me sweat, though. If they see that you get upset, then they tend to play with that particular person a little bit more. So I try to walk slow if I want to leave the building and not let them know they've, they've spooked me. But there's been times they have. I don't like being in here by myself anymore. Mm. So, Wanda, that brings me to another question. So how do you prepare yourself either mentally or spiritually before you go to the club? Well, I live about maybe 15 minutes away from the building. So when somebody calls and I have to come in to give one of my tours, I used to listen to the music constantly, but I turn the radios off, and when I start my way in, I start saying my prayers to my guardian angel, and I've got a guide that hangs out with me, and I'll ask them to stick with me too. And I feel like I've been here long enough that some of these spirits I've gotten to know. They, they show up in different ways, or they just do little things, and you know which one it is depending on which room it is that it's, it's weird things are happening in. But I say my prayers all the way in, and when I come into the door, I tell them, hi, I'm here. I'm bringing some people in to visit with you today. We're not going to take anything or disturb you, you know, anything that belongs to you. So I ask them if they'll come play nice and don't scratch or bite anybody, and for the most part, we have a good time. They want to get ready to leave. I always tell them that they are forbidden to go home with me, that they must stay here. And I will come back to see them the next day and bring some more people to visit them, too. And, of course, I always tell other people when they take their tour to make sure that whether they say it as a quiet prayer to themselves or whether they say it out loud to uh, be sure to tell the spirits that they are not welcome to follow them home, that this is their home and they have to stay here. That seems to be working. I've had them... A uh, shadow figure in my house twice over the years that my husband noticed, and so we saw it in stage the house. And uh, ever since, that's when I started doing what I do now, and it seems to be working for me. And of course, I I keep my holy water and my prayer books and all different types of stuff here, just in case we would have a bad ap- episode. And I've had to break them out a time or two, but for the most part, um, we do okay. I don't think I've got out of head to deal with anything demonic. I I really feel like the exorcisms that were done years ago pretty well took care of that, unless somebody yeah. specifically tries to call something out. But um, I you know the spirits we have some are children, some are women, some are men, and some of them had bad attitudes before they crossed over, and they seem to have took them with them. But uh, right. for the most part, I think we all get along okay. Well, you know, Anthony, you, <laughs> you've had a couple of our guys follow you. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I know that for sure, firsthand. Now, mm-hmm. Wanda, you wrote a, an awesome book called I Believe in Paranormal Things, which was published in 2010 and is full of amazing paranormal stories that you've encountered throughout your life. I highly recommend everybody go out and buy Wanda's book. I mean, the holidays are right around the corner. Check Amazon.com or, or go to Wanda's website, Wanda K. Dot com for info. But I wanted to ask you, Wanda, out of all the stories in the book, what mm-hmm. one story stands out the most to you or one that has had the most sort of impact on your life? Well, there's, there's several in there that uh, that jumped to my mind first. So the, the one I always like to, to tell about is when we had had the bands come in here to do a benefit, and one of those bands happened to be a rock and roll group. When they started playing their music, the PA system kept cutting out on them. The speakers would shut down, the microphones wouldn't work. So the sound men would run up there and start jingling wires and stuff and messing with them, trying to get them started up. And it'd come back for a few minutes and cut out on them again. It worked perfectly for every other band the entire day until these guys got up. I made a little comment over the the microphone that uh, you might want to play something else. I don't think the spirits like what you're doing. (laughs) And the sound men and the other people who are familiar with the club, 
knew what I was talking about and, and respected what I was saying, but the band <laughs> apparently didn't believe, and they laughed and shook it off and went about doing what they were doing. And within about 10 minutes, the PA totally, totally shut down. They, they, it just wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to be able to play. So when it finally shut down and they started to come off the stage to give up, about six people in the, the main hall here, I seen them walking over to each other, tapping them on the shoulders and showing them their telephones. And that was kind of odd. You don't see that with several people all at the same time. So I walked over to one and asked him, what's going on? What's going on? She said, look at this. When that band stuff shut down, we started getting messages, and they're from 66666. Wow. One man by the name of Big Tom had his phone with the same numbers on it. Nobody else had a voice message except Big Tom. And in the most demonic sound of voice I've ever heard, it said, make them leave. I listened once. I threw the phone back at him. I did not want to hear it again. <laughs> oh, my so, God. So uh, that, that was a pretty wild one. Um, another really cool episode was I had um, Crystal Brooks. She's with the Northern Kentucky Paranormal Society, and they help mm-hmm. give tours here on, on the weekends. So she was over in my DJ booth with me in between sets on a Friday or Saturday night. And I've got a friend that always likes to bring me a dozen roses. And I slide them in between the DJ window that's around my booth and in between my uh, my system. It kind of holds them there snugly so they don't fall or anything. And I've done this for years. But this particular night, while we were standing in the DJ booth, those flowers came to an upright position. Wow. They tipped over and fell off of from behind the, the, the DJ box. But yeah. they didn't fall on the floor like you would think they would. They wound up coming over in front of the DJ box where our feet were and landed standing with the flowers upside down on the floor and the stem standing straight up in the air. We both mm-hmm. looked at each other. I said, well, isn't that special? <laughs> we both <laughs> laughed. And when I picked them up, the tops of the roses were all singed. So I took a picture of oh. that, and we put that in the book, too. So I've had a few incidents when it comes to the roses. I heard that one of the dance the dancers here used to get flowers, too, and we get the smell of roses quite a bit. So maybe she was a little upset that the roses were coming towards me. I, I don't know. <laughs> but that wow. those the two, two incidents I thought were really cool that I, I will always remember. In, in in your book, you mentioned that the uh, the paranormal experiences started when you were just six years old. Uh, can you sort of briefly briefly describe what happened when when you were a little girl and how you cope with it? Yeah, um, I've noticed since we've been working here, I've talked to a lot of different people that seem to have had the same experiences all happening when they were about six years old, just like me. Thing mm-hmm. is. Um, People are told not to pay any attention to it. They wipe it out of their minds. And I think if you don't use it, you lose it. So in my case, when I was uh, six years old, I started having dreams. The first one I had was of my grandfather. And every time um, I would go to sleep, my father and my uncle were carrying a big box down an aisle inside of a church with lots of my family members on each side. Every time they get to the the end of the aisle and get ready to open this casket, I would wake up. And I was running a fever that night, sweating. And I would cry. It would scare me. But I'd go back to sleep. And this would win all all night. I'd even went to bed early that night because I wasn't feeling well. So I would get up, sneak into the bathroom, uh, wash my face off, try to go back to sleep, lay back down. And the dream would recontinue over and over and over. Finally... Hours later, I got to the part where they opened the casket, and I seen who was in it. It was my grandfather. And I woke up because it scared me, and the telephone had rang in the hallway. My mother came into the room and turned on the light, and she's a very religious lady. We'd always went to church. So she came in, and she said, Girls, I need you to say a prayer for your grandfather. He's sick, and they're taking him to the hospital. And I looked at her and I said, it won't do any good. And she stared at me and she says, what do you mean? Why would you say something like that, Wanda Kay? I said, I've been dreaming about him all night, Mom. I said, he's already dead. Grandpa died. And she she 
the the look she gave me when I think about it today, it, it hurts. It, it yeah. It was not a good look. She looked like she was afraid of me. You know, it was a scary thing for me. She said, "Don't say that. Don't ever say that. God can do anything." And I don't know why you're saying that, but I want you to pray for your grandfather. I said, "Okay." So she no sooner walked out of the room, and the telephone rang again. I heard her out there talking on it. She came back into my room, and she stood there, and she just stared at me. And I cried because she scared me the way she stared at me. And I, yeah. I said, "What? what is it, Grandma? I mean, Mom. She says, uh, Grandpa's dead. She said, how did you know that? I said, I've been dreaming about him all night long. So that's how it started. Uh then it got to the point where we lived in a house that was over 100 and something years old when we were there. So I would constantly hear people when we were scraping wallpaper off the walls. There was like 13 layers of it in that house. And when we were scraping it off and I'd be in there by myself, I'd kind of zone out and I would hear voices. I would kind of see things out of the corner of my eyes. And um, it intrigued me. I knew that nobody else was seeing this or hearing it. The way my mother had already looked at me freaked me out, so I wasn't about to share any more with them. But uh, as years went on, I wound up having animals that would come to me and and do things for me, Uh, wild animals that would come out of the woods. We were surrounded by those when I grew up. And um, just every kind of animal you can think of, from possums to coons to snakes or whatnot, horses, dogs, mean things that nobody else could get around always would come to me and and do what I wanted them to do. And um, I would start studying books and reading up on psychic stuff, um, extrasensory perception, things like that. And I got pretty good at that type of stuff as I was growing up. But when I hit my 20s, I had been in a bad relationship and the person I was with was hurting me. And I had had enough of it. And um, I had screamed out one day when they went to hit me to, to stop. And I put my hands up. I had grounded my feet. And I had been practicing for a long time. And I just, it's hard to explain, but I feel like that energy came from myself, from within, or somebody somewhere. But somehow or another, when the man went to swing for me, the knuckles on his hand, he never touched me, but his knuckles busted and became bloody. It scared me to death. I thought, if this happened on account of me, if I had any bad thoughts towards anyone, I could probably hurt them, and it scared me to death. So yeah. uh, I started blocking everything out, and for about 10 years, never talked about it. My husband that I've been with for 23 years now did not have a clue about any of my past history. I kept it that way. And uh, after I started working here at Bobby Mackey's and seeing how many people were interested in the paranormal and the stories like I had lived, I thought, well, now's the time I can finally come out and share what I know, and maybe people won't think I'm totally nuts or totally crazy. Right. So um, when I got here, I first thing I did was um, started hearing voices calling my name. I tried to block it out because I'd had, like I said, bad incidents, and I didn't want to ghost on or draw anything towards me but uh you can't run away from it if if uh they're around they're going to let you know it so i just accept it but i don't open up all the way i still stay pretty shut down to these guys i don't trust any of them they may tell me it's a little boy or a little girl but how do i know that yeah. for a fact it yeah. could be some a trickster so i always keep my guard up and um I use a pendulum ball. I pull some of the spirits out here that like to follow me so that the guests can talk with them on their uh, ghost boxes and their K2 meters and things like that so, you know, you can make contact. But, again, I keep my distance, and I always tell them they, they're not allowed to come with me. They're not allowed to, to hang out with me after I leave this building. So that's uh, that's pretty much my life when it comes to ghosts and stuff. Now, I I know you have another book that you're currently working on. Can you give us a hint of what to expect in your new book? Uh, Yeah. That one's all about the most haunted nightclub in America, being Bobby Mackey's. And it's got over 450-something photos in it. And uh, some of these are from myself. And many of them are from the guests that have came here and visited, took the tours, or done overnight investigations like yourself. And they've caught some pretty wild things, and they'll share them with me and send them to me. And uh, what I do is I try to zoom in. Now, of course, it has to be in black and white for the book. But um, there are some 
awesome, awesome shots of full body apparitions, uh, mist and orbs. Also, I give the history of uh, the club mixed in as it's like a tour, a, a tour mm-hmm. right there in the book with all the extra goodies that I could never take the time to do in a little two hour tour. And a lot of people think, oh, Lord, two hours is a long time. But it never fails. I get people in here and we do an hour upstairs, we do an hour downstairs, and I say, Is it over already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this, we, this we felt book that is too, just, yeah. uh, it's just packed with everything I've we've picked up here within the last three or four years. I got one last week and uh it's one of the neatest photos I've seen so far. They took a photo of Bobby Mackey's stage and it's supposed to be empty because nobody else was in the building except us taking our tour. And when we got it back, we've got a naked woman standing on the stage where the drums are. I'm taking a guess that maybe it might be uh, Gypsy Rosalie, who was a stripper who performed here in the 30s. But um, she's not the only one oh, on wow. stage. There's, there's a keyboard player and a tux playing his keyboards, a couple other people standing up on the stage, too. Um, there's about five figures in, in this on that stage. So that's the wow. biggest photo I've seen so far. Wow. Yeah. Are, are you going to be able to put that into, into the book? Yep. They give, gives permission Great. to put it in there. I can't remember off the top of my head who took that particular picture, but, of course, once it's in the book, everybody's names go right on there telling you who took them. If they belong to one of our ghost hunting teams, the name of the group, the investigators, is also on there, too, so everybody gets full credit. But, um... No, there's no way I, I this book would be what it is without the help of everybody who's contributed. Oh, that's great. And when, when could we when could we expect it? Well, like I said, if I didn't have so much else to do, two weeks would probably get her done. It's uh, in the middle of being edited right now, so I'm going to hope in January. I can't say with Christmas and the holidays that's all slowing me down too. So I'm going to say probably about the second or third week of uh, January. And all you've got to do is keep your eyes open on Facebook because as soon as it's done and I've got it in print, I'll definitely put the word out because I'll be so excited. I mean, the book is done, finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's um, L- Lucy, both, go ahead. Both books will be on Amazon.com okay. and uh, wherever else Amazon throws it. But I always ask my friends, if, if they don't mind, if you're really going to purchase the book, go to WandaK.com. Um, yes. Any, anybody who is writing a book, if you can get it from their particular website, it's going to help the author out so much more. I mean, we've invested years worth of research and time in writing these, and when you go through Amazon or some of the other places, they get 90% of what the book cost is. And if you go the other way, at least your writer is going to get at least part of it. So, right. so- com, check it out. <laughs> Yes, well, Wanda, we recommend. certainly will pass the word pass the word along when it when it comes out, and I know Thank both you. of us will 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 go and definitely get that. Um, so, Wanda, back in July of this year, you were mm-hmm. on another radio show. Mm-hmm. Wanda, yes. So Anthony and I were able to call and we spoke with you. Now, did you know that during your call with Anthony? We heard a voice come through while you were speaking, and it said the word out. <laughs> I had heard um, that particular uh, radio station, the, the person that was running it, had sent me an email the next day and told me they were going to send me um, a copy of it so that I could try to hear that for myself. But I never have got to hear it, but I, well, I had Wanda, heard you were picking up some stuff. Wanda, I believe Anthony has a clip of that call. Would you like to hear it? I would love to hear it. All right, Anthony? I'm going to play it right now. Yep, I'm going to play okay. it right now. I had a set of earrings that my sister had got for me that were special made. Um, not any more like these, like I said, special made. And when I went into the club, I don't undress or take my jewelry off when I'm at work, but it was laying there on the bar again. So they were bringing stuff from the house. So I saged the house and I salted it and said some prayers. Um, from that, told them to get out. And they did, and from that point on, ever since then, when I go to work, I pray on my way in. I envision myself surrounded in a white light that they cannot penetrate. And when I get ready to leave, I do the same thing, and I forbid them. I do. Yeah, I heard that. 
You heard did that? It say, did it say out, O-U-T, or ouch? It said, I think it said out, and, and I don't know if it was mimicking you when you said get out. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like out. Yeah, they're backing up. They they knew that what I was. That's what I believe. Yeah, they knew they weren't supposed <laughs> to be here. They had to stay out. <laughs> That's funny. I'll I'll forward you that on Facebook so you have it, or, or I'll, I'll email I, it to you. I would you. love it. They've gotten to know me pretty well. It's come to the point uh, <laughs> a lot of people will pick up EVPs where they're saying my name or talking about me. I think it's kind of funny. I've heard about <laughs> one that's not really happy about me, but you know how it goes. You can't please everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess on this side or the other side. <laughs> Well, Wanda, we actually have another one that we, we caught oh, yeah? from the same fall. Yeah. Good Anthony, thing. can you play that one? Yeah, this one is um, it's a very quick one. It actually says uh, what we think says, oh, no. So I'm going to play it. It's about five seconds long. I okay. them to be in my life, and things seem to be working for me. <laughs> I you heard it. that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys did good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering when you listen back what you're going to catch from here since we're sitting right here in the, in the building with it this time. Because I was home when I was right. that interview. And they weren't supposed to be with me, but you know how it goes. As long as they're not bothering me and they're keeping quiet, you know, out of sight, out of mind, I guess I'm all right with that. But I'm sitting in the yeah. gift shop now, and I've got a couple that hang back here in this area. A lot of times they'll bang the stuff, or I've had all my locks open when I came in. That's kind of slowed down a little bit. i got a mirror here behind me that we keep uh, paper over the top of, decoration paper, just so that they can't watch me through the mirror. <laughs> I figure this is my uh, home base territory here, so I try to make it ghost-free, but apparently they're here anyway. Um, I'm trying to think what's... Was it your group that got the picture that had the panda bear on it? No, that wasn't our group, no. Okay. Well, somebody took a picture of a panda bear sticking its head through the window back here in my gift shop. And at least it looked like a panda bear, and that's what got everybody's attention. But after I got a hold of the photo and I put it into black and white to tone down all these colors that are going on back here, we actually mm-hmm. seen two little twin boys one had his arms around the head of the bear, so maybe it was a stuffed animal, you know, that, that was oh. kind of thing, since it was like a favorite. And the other little boy had his hands on the counter right next to him, looking down into the counter where I have all my gifts and my crystals and stuff like that. So they look like they're about six years old. they got black hair, and it's cut across their, the bangs are cut like in a bowl cut across their little heads. So they, uh, I think that's really cool. I, I have no idea who they are. A man named Buck Brady is the person that owned the building here over the years from about 1920 up until uh, 1968. And uh, I had asked some of his family for some interviews and were talking and asked if there was a chance these twins might have been somebody in their family. They said no, so I don't know who they are, where they came from, but I know they hang back here in the gift shop and they like to knock stuff around. So um, I'm really curious. I'm, uh, it'd be neat if you catch anything on tonight's uh, talk. You'll have to let me know. Definitely. <laughs> oh, we definitely will. We definitely will. But get one. Mm-hmm. The last time we were there, mm-hmm. you you did allow me to make an offering to the Cherokee spirits uh-huh. that are buried there. And uh-huh. I don't know about Anthony, but I noticed a def- definite difference in the atmosphere after I did that. It felt almost peaceful to me. So uh-huh. I wanted to ask, has anyone ever done anything like that before an investigation? And did you notice any change in the feeling of the place? Well, when we were together that night, of course, I, you know, I did. But... We're used to that anyway. I can come into this building and, and you go into one room and it'll be so thick you could cut it with a knife. And then maybe you walk out and go in right through the door into another room and, and not have the same feeling at all. Um, other times you can walk in here and it's like something just following you the whole time, the, the heaviness. They don't bother me. I've never been scratched or hurt. But like you said, just the offering alone, when you did it that night, it did lift the air. It, it became right. very light-hearted after you did that. 
And I'll tell you yeah. another neat thing. After you left, they had to put a wall up downstairs in the wall of faces so that people couldn't get back to where the um, sprinkler system is. Mm -hmm. And while they were there building that, your tobacco was sitting on the uh, table in that room. And they wound up moving it and put it up st up on top of a two-by-four that was used to frame this wall. And then they were putting uh, chicken wire up to keep people from going back there. The caretaker had called me and wanted to know, was anybody smoking in that back room? Because we forbid smoking in the basement, of course. And I said, right. no, why are you asking? He said, well, I found these cigarettes laying on the table downstairs last night. I said, those belong to, to Lucy. She came through and made an offering. I told her she could leave them there. I said, but they're not smoked. I said, why are you asking if somebody was in there smoking? I said, you know, I don't allow that, and your cigarettes shouldn't look like they've been burnt. He said, well, the reason I'm asking is, did you have anybody in here last night? I said, no, why? He said, because those cigarettes aren't there anymore. He said, they're up on top of the two-by-four by the ceiling. So he oh and I God. were the only one. That I I think they moved them up there to say, hey, these are mine. Don't bother them. <laughs> oh, that's but the, awesome. Um, but we still got the uh, Indian chief face that's on that back wall that's back there, too. Now, it's never went, went anywhere. But the cigarettes are still up there on top of the two-by-four, and we got the chicken wire blocking them off where nobody else can get to them or move them or anything. And we still got some up on the second floor, and I put those into a big jug. Um, a glass container so that nobody would pick them up or walk off with them or anything. I did have one little girl pick some up uh, from downstairs one day and went to hand them to me. And um, she brought them up here to the gift shop and went to hand them to me. I said, oh, sweetheart, I said, that was a, a sacred offering we had downstairs. I said, we we ought to put those back. She was scared to death they were going to get mad at her or bother her for taking them. <laughs> And um, she took it and set it back downstairs and told him she was sorry. I said, that, that ought to do the trick. So she hasn't had any trouble, but she came back last week. Um, a lot of people, you know how they do. They'll, they'll do a visit, and they come back a couple months later. But um, I had asked her how things went because she brought up the subject about moving those cigarettes. I said, did anything ever bother you? She said, no. I said, well, you did the right thing. You put them back. You told them you were sorry. You didn't realize that that was theirs, and we had no problem with it. But yeah, it it was definitely made a difference when you did that that night. Wow! So, wow. I've got people walking in here. Our, our c c club is starting to fill up. They keep peeking in. They know we're talking on the radio here, so they keep waving and stuff. <laughs> it's, I think it's kind of funny. They're afraid to, to talk too much for fear they'd be hurt. So they're all standing outside <laughs> the doors, peeking in here, watching me with my phone to my head. <laughs> Uh, so, Wanda, you give tours at Bobby Mackey's, of course, and uh -huh. there's private investigations that are done there. What can um, some of our listeners expect if they were to take a tour at Bobby Mackey's or actually do a private investigation? What, what could they expect? What could they expect to see or hear or learn from you and from the place? Okay. Well, the first thing you know when you come in, whether it's a tour or investigation, I have everybody sign a release form. It says if you fall down, you get hurt, you pee your pants, or you become possessed. People laugh at that, but you never know <laughs> that we're not responsible oh, yeah. for that. So, hey, girl, how are you? All right. Good. All right. Take care. All right. That's a couple of our res resident ghost hunters here just come up to say hello. They just check the place and go back out. But anyway, hey. once you get signed in, I take you through the building, give you a brief walkthrough, tell you the history of the club. If um, they want to stay in any particular place because maybe they think they're hearing something or sometimes my sensitive people just pick up on other activity. So I'll allow you to stand there and, and try to communicate, talk if you want. Uh, we sell some ghost hunting equipment. We also rent some ghost hunting equipment that people are able to take with them, like K2 meters. Um, laser lights, things like that. Uh, let's see, when we investigate, no, or even your tours, nobody else is in this building except us. It's shut down to the public. You have to arrange a, um appointment, so I come down and let you come into the place here. And then um, some, sometimes, like I say, these guys aren't on the payroll. 
So I, I can't tell you 100% that anybody's going to show up, but I've found out right. that depending on the personality of the people that are coming in is the spirits that are going to come out and, and, and show themselves or make themselves known. We've got about 44 of them that I have names of at this point that I've been saving names. We collect them from EVPs. And then uh, sometimes my psychics come in and they verify and validate some of the stuff that we've talked about in the past, too. So um, I've got one by the name of George. It tends to be our grumpier ghost. hangs out in the back room and up in the apartment. I've got uh, several ladies that have made themselves known, especially since October of this year. And the one that seems to be in charge is called Bunny. And Bunny has a potty mouth like a sailor. Everything is F this and F that. <laughs> and uh, then we've got a bunch of children. We've got about 16 or 17 of them in the basement. Uh, Joey likes to follow me around quite a bit. He's supposed to be 11. And i got one named Timmy. I mean, Timmy follows me, but Joey's usually in the basement. And we had a little girl named Sally who would always tell us to be careful of Marcus, that Marcus was bad. Well... Um, I kind of get a kick out of Marcus, and he kind of gets a kick out of kicking people, I think. We had a gentleman oh, really? doing an invest. Yeah, he was in the wall, of, um, the well room downstairs, and he had tried to call the spirits to come out to communicate. One kept slapping him on the back of his head and kept doing this <laughs> over and over to the man. And finally the man got a little upset and told the spirit, I'm tired of this. You come to the front of me, you make yourself known. If you're going to communicate, come from the front. Well, I was sitting over in the wall of faces with some other people, but we could hear them talking back there in the well room. Next thing you know, I heard a big bang and clang and heard this man cussing and carrying on. <laughs> and so we said, we better go back there and see what's going on. He had been kicked in the shin, and it brought him to, <laughs> to his knees. So he limped the rest of the night and uh, limped when he went home. And we just laughed. I said, I'm sorry. I said, but I believe that was Marcus. He, that's just the sort of thing he does. <laughs> so it wasn't no big demon or anything. It was just one of the kids. So we had some funny <laughs> things that happened. They do have a sense of humor, and they will mess with you. Is, is there a specific spot in, in uh, Bobby Mackey's that um, is more haunted than the others? Or, or is just no. seeing more activity than the others? No, it seems like there's no rhyme or reason. You can come in here at 12 noon. You can come in here at 12 at midnight. If they're going to be out and active, they're going to be out and active. If they're not, they're not. It um, doesn't matter if there's one person in the building or a thousand people in the building. I could say there's about 44. It seems like they've all got certain areas that they like to hang out. I have four dominants that are in control of all the others. Um mm. And the one we call Buck seems to be in major control. Then we've got uh, George, that when he tells them to shut up, they'll shut up and won't talk to us anymore. Uh, the one that stays in charge over the children goes by the name of Sir. I only say that once on our tours, and the rest of the night he is called Butthead, because I believe that uh, <laughs> I don't want to give him any extra energy or um, acknowledgement or anything because he is yeah. a bad person that I'm I'm not very pleased with. Um, mm -hmm. The fourth one would be Red, and we believe that he mm -hmm. was a hitman for the mob. They call him the Enforcer, and he shows up as a cowboy here. A lot of people get pictures of him, and they've, uh, I believe that one of our TV crews that came in actually caught him on video too, so they've seen him on television. And but, he's, uh, he's mostly uh, in the basement though, right? Yes, he, he tends to stay down there because Buck is usually up here. And if these are, again, like I say, you can never tell for sure. And they do, most of them don't give me last names, but Red did give us a full name through an EVP. Three words: Red Masterson. And the guy's right. name was Red Masterson. Mm -hmm. um, we've asked him since he was an enforcer if he would mind stepping up to the plate and protecting the children from Butthead, mm. and keeping Butthead out of the picture. And that was about three months ago. So every time I go downstairs now, um, he seems to be back there where the children usually are, are seen and talk to us. And he claims he's watching them. The children claim that they're watching too, so I think we'll be okay. Uh, you can get in. 
No. Okay. I had a friend come up wanted to know if I wanted to, to caretaker wanted to know if I wanted to hide in the back room so I could hear. So no, we're fine here. This is where we like it. Yeah. So, Wanda, it, 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 you know, we, we talk about all the activity and experiences that happen on the investigations and, um, you know, overnight stuff. It, it, anything happen while Bobby Mackey's Music World is open and, like, right now? Is there oh, ever yeah. been an experience or, yeah? Always. Um, people go down here on these tours now when they're drinking, they get a little lively, and I get a lot of people who wind up scratched on a Friday or Saturday night because they want to go down there and kind of run their mouths and test the waters. Um, right. One of the the most common things, though, is people will be standing around, or they may go walking through the club by their by themselves without anybody next to them, and you'll feel somebody push you, or hit you, or pull your hair. And when you turn mm. around and you're ready to start arguing with somebody for doing that, there's nobody there. So I think they like to mess with us and stir stuff up. Uh, also, there's been many times that I thought that our caretaker was in the hall about 10 feet, 10, 12 feet in front of me. And I would be walking down the hall trying to catch up with him. And when we get to the end of the room, right about the time he turned the corner, he would vanish. And it wasn't the caretaker at all. It was one of the spirits. Oh, wow. so we get stuff like that that happens all the time, where people will set stuff down. When you come back, it's gone. Sometimes it'll come back to where it was within an hour or so or a few minutes. Other times it disappears and you never see it again. You just don't know where it went. Right. But uh, messing with you, pushing you around um, from behind is a pretty common thing on Friday and Saturday. Wow. Wow. Well, Wanda, I do want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and letting us share the experience of Bobby Mackey's. I can't tell you how special this experience was for us. Now, uh, you know, we're going to quite all right. down there, and we we can't wait to see you. We can't wait for you to come back. I miss you guys. I've had fun with you like, quite a few times. Well, so, we're, yeah. we're, wow. definitely, we're definitely coming back. Okay. Well, I thank you so much for calling us and giving us a chance to talk about the place and, and let you thank you for plugging my book there and letting everybody know about it. Like you said, it would make a great Christmas present. And also, if anybody wants to buy any advance tickets to take a two-hour tour or for the investigation, that can be arranged if you want to give something away for Christmas and then the person can uh, pick the date that they would like later. Again, all that, WandaKay.com. Yep, WandaKay.com. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. This is great. You're welcome. And tell, tell Bobby Mackey that we appreciate this also, too. Thank you so much. We will do it. But you guys take care, all right? When you're ready to all do right. something, we will. go talk and come and on back and see me. We, we, we will. And happy holidays to you and everybody. You, too. You all take care. Good night. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Lucy? Wow. She is such <clears throat> that was a great, great. person. <laughs> this was such an experience. Oh, my God, I'm so happy. You know what? She's such a great person. She's She was such a great hostess when we did our private investigations this year, And which reminds me, as she said, if you guys out there want to investigate Bobby Mackey's and you think you can handle those spirits in the basement, please give <laughs> Wanda a call. Schedule a tour or private investigation. Go to WandaKate.com. You'll find the contact info. You'll find the pricing. Please, you got to do it if you want to go there. Um, Anthony, are we, uh, uh, are we um, good on time? Yeah, yeah, we're actually good on time. Okay, so can we start the review of some of the activity that happens in the place? Sure. Okay. So, um, at- go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Uh, apparitions. Um, they've been seen, and other occurrence, occurrences point to unseen presence in that building. Um, let's see. The entity of Alonzo Walling has appeared. There's been an apparition of a headless woman, Pearl, who has appeared to the people. A psychic has seen Scott Jackson yelling at the headless Pearl, saying that is all her fault. Pearl is fretting as she holds her head in her hands, and she's saying, my head, my head. 
Um, like Wanda mentioned, there's the entity of a little girl that appeared in the basement. She threw rocks at the living. There is the entity of a boy, a victim of vicious thugs, and he appears in the basement as well. Um, the entity of Joanna has been seen by the living on stage right behind Bobby Mackey while he's performing with the band. She's also seen in other places around the building. And you can smell her perfume. It smells like flowers. And it's an aroma that many, many of the, the investigators have uh, experienced. Water faucets, they turn on and off by themselves. Lights have a mind of their own as well. And when the wife of an employee walked into the, be- into the building, the unplugged jukebox began playing the anniversary song. And that song wasn't even on the jukebox. Um, like Wanda mentioned, some of those spirits have known to be bullies and downright nasty. Many rough characters visited and worked at this place of entertainment while they were alive. And being dead hasn't improved their behavior at all. Um, let's see. Pregnant women, they're picked on by Joanna. Right after Bob and his pregnant wife, Janet, bought the building, she became the object of harassment by Johanna to the point where she almost miscarried. One such incident, she was grabbed around the waist and thrown down on the ground. Something pushed her from behind as she scurried down the, scare, uh, down the stairs. She heard a disembodied female voice yelling at her, Get out, get out, get out. Um, Carl Lawson, the former caretaker, was possessed by the spirits and underwent an exorcism in the early 1990s. Uh, ghosts have been seen by psychics hanging around the mechanical bull in area and up in the caretaker's apartment. Entities have been known to start fights in the club by poking, touching, scratching people, and pulling their hairs. Wanda just mentioned that. Um, and it is certainly true that Bobby Mackey's music world has quite a few strongly opinionated, sometimes rowdy spirits who left, let the living know when they disprove of changes made or the music that's presented or even outfits worn by patrons in very blatant ways. Now, the sign which is posted on the front door warning about uh, warning the patrons about ghosts ad- was advised by Bobby Mackey's Music World's lawyers after a patron's clothing was ripped in the bathroom by a disproving entity dressed in a cowboy hat. Um, I believe she said that was Bob, didn't she? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Now, when a set-up person accidentally dropped a chair, Pounding from the catwalk continued until she fled. Anthony? Okay, now we're getting to the good part. We're going to review our investigation at Bobby Mackey's. Yeah, I think we've had some great investigations, and I think this place could possibly be labeled as one of the best including the evidence that we captured and the incident that happened to you and to me. So, Anthony, why don't you start the review with our first investigation back in June? Well, it was in June of this year, and we actually went along with the Kling brothers, who had their own show on the Discovery Channel, if you know. Uh, It was called Ghost Lab. Barry and Brad um, were great guys, and they had invited a bunch of people to investigate Bobby Mackey's with them, and they actually did it for the first time themselves. And it was the first time for us. We had about four, I think it was four hours to investigate. And we were able to investigate every inch of the place, including, um, Lucy, I think you did the old bank vault room, which I didn't get a chance to do that one, but you did that. Um, Mm -hmm. And Lucy had an incident in the men's bathroom. No, not that kind of incident. (laughs) She'll explain that later. But uh, a couple of interesting experiences that happened. I just wanted to go over some of them. Um, We captured this white rod-like orb um, that just floated through the air in the basement. We were down there just investigating, and I had my night vision camera on, and we were facing it towards the back area of the basement. And what we had thought was a shadow coming from behind the refrigerator, um, we noticed that shadow, whatever it was, we came to later find out that it was one of ours, uh, our shadows uh, forecasted in the back there. But um, at that same time, we actually caught this white 
rod-like orb. We don't, I don't know. I've never seen that before. I've always seen those round orbs, but this thing was sort of rod-like and weird-shaped and, um, and had a bend to it, too. But um, we caught that in the basement. Um, when we entered the room with the well in the basement, and Lucy, you talked about this just before, about Johanna, we got an overwhelming smell of a flowery perfume. It, it lasted for about a minute or two and then dissipated. It was very strange. Remember, remember that, Lucy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We had um, sounds of ground noises we, we heard, actually, in the well room. Not sure if that was something evil or um, what's claimed to be the spirit of a red-eyed dog that has been witnessed in the basement. And finally, uh, the one experience that I will never forget, we were down in the basement <clears throat> in the room called Room with Faces, and Wanda had just talked about that before, and we were conducting a spirit box session with a few other people. I was standing in the room filming the session with my night vision camera. I always have my camera with me. And uh, I was standing about four feet sort of from the circle of, of the, uh, the spirit session of Lucy and the gang that were there. And one of the members of the group was asking to get scratched and or sort of have the spirits touch them or just something happened to them when all of a sudden I felt the sensation that there were like like a hundred bugs or something flying or crawling around my neck. I, you know, tried to swat the air behind my head thinking, you know, I would get rid of the bugs and, and hopefully the feeling stopped. But soon after I started to feel heat coming from my neck and it was a really weird heat sensation. Um, it wasn't heat as if you were, you know, kneeling down by a heater or, or hot air blowing on you. It sort of felt as though it was coming within my my neck or, or my body coming outward. And um, it was a slow, dull heat, but it uh, felt like it was increasing in temperature as the minutes rolled by. And I, I asked a fellow investigator to shine their flashlight in the back of my neck to see if there were any bugs. And when she did, she noticed two scratches that ran from my hairline on my neck down to the middle of my back by my shoulder blades. And the heat and the burning sensation lasted for about five hours and then stopped. It, it never felt like fingers or anything like that, just sort of like a wispy feeling. I don't know, I keep saying bugs, like bugs were attacking me. It, you know, it did not feel as though someone scratched me. It just... It was just a very odd thing, and we quickly went outside to take a break and catch our bearings from what just happened. And um, actually, um, the picture that we had taken of my, my neck, um, I believe, is going to be in Wanda's new book that she's working on. Hopefully, that's going to come out in, um, uh, in the spring, hopefully, or by the spring of uh, next year, 2012. But I uh, wanted to play the video, or the audio, I'm sorry, of the moment when this all happened, just so you sort of get an idea of um, what the night was or what the feeling was of how it all encountered. So let me just play it for you. Do you remember which one? No. This one... Okay, we're sick of playing around. How many people are in here with us? Right, the one that was with the devil. Did I just say please help? Very loud. Who needs help? Ah. What happened? Something hit my hand. Do you like men? Did you hit Anthony? Did you hit Anthony? A bug or something? I can't see it tonight, but I can't see it tonight. Did you slap Anthony? It's your scratch. No. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you are. Cool, no. Yeah, you, you are. are. You're scratch. Yeah, you are. You oh, are. my God. Get out of here. That is right. You, you are. are. You 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 are. If it is off to the three, those are two good scratches. Okay. Wow. Is wow. it? Hold on, see, let me see, Do you need the light? Yeah, I need the light. This is burning. Hold on. Oh, sure, hold on. Sorry about this. Go ahead. Hold the light on there. Is it two or three? I don't want to. All right, good. Right now, these scratches, they're long, long, and they're. They go down? 
yeah, I mean, for for the entire night, I felt no no fear, no like trepidation when walking into the room with faces or the well room, or even Jahana's dressing room, where you know it's known to to have that activity or even that feeling. And I've gotten that, and Lucy, you've gotten that feeling many many times when we've gone to places. It's not so much fear, but it's 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 the feeling that you know that something is there and something is around you or either watching or with you or um and I didn't feel that at all. I felt very calm, very peaceful and almost bored to that point, but um <laughs> something actually something actually did happen at the end of the night that was kind of weird which which I'll talk about, but um yeah, I mean, it, it was much more calmer and, and less heavy than it was from the first time that we were there. And um, uh, I, I, I admit, I, I, I didn't listen to the rule that you should shut your cell phone off completely. Um, that's one of the rules that actually we talked about in our previous show, um, that you should have your cell phones off during an investigation. And I didn't do that this time. And I had my cell phone on, but it was still on vibrate. It, there was no, I don't have a ringtone or anything like that. I don't like, I hate ringtones. Um, so when we were sort of towards the end of the night, we were down again in the room with faces. And that's that room, I guess to me, seems as though uh, it's a, not attached, but some sort of a, attachment that I have with that place. That's where I got scratched. Uh, on the back of my neck, and this time on our second trip when we were down there, we were again, we were doing a spirit box session, and uh, again, I was filming the group, but this time I was actually sitting down in the circle doing the spirit box session, and I had my camera going on, and all of a sudden, my cell phone started to play music, and, you know, it wasn't, you know, like Lady Gaga or LMFAO or anything like that. It was this weird old melodic tone. It was a um, sort of like a horn, um, maybe even like a French horn or something, um, but musical. And I had never heard of that. I, I know I didn't download anything like that. I I don't even know how to download anything like that. I don't have an iPod. Um, so I don't know how to do those things. And this song just started to play on my phone. I pulled out my phone from the holster that I had on my belt, and I showed everybody, and I noticed as well, that my phone was locked. And after 15 minutes of not using my phone, it locks, and you have to enter in the code to actually do anything to it, and that sort of prevent, you know, the the infamous quote unquote butt dialing that people do. Um, so it it had it was locked, and in order to do anything to the phone, make a phone call, go on to an application, send out a text, email, or anything like that, you have to enter into this code. It will not do anything. And when I pulled out the phone, I noticed it was locked, but the phone was still playing this music. I don't know how it turned on. I don't know how it came to be that way. But later, um, when we returned back home after the investigation, I did some research online and found some uh, online software that you can actually play the music because, again, I had recorded this on my video. So I was actually, to, I was actually able to find out the um, whereabouts of this song and, and the details of it. And... The song is actually, um, uh, it was a piece by Maurice Ravel, R-A-V-E-L. And the title of the song, in its true form, and it's a French song, it's actually called Pavan, and forgive me for uh, debacling this, this word, <laughs> Pavan pour un enfant de font. Um, that was a bad bad uh, <laughs> translation. Um, but it's a French song, and, and it translates to English, meaning song for a dead princess, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it sort of questions, could this be the song for Pearl Bryan um, from Bobby Mackey's, you know, or, or for Johanna from her beloved boyfriend at the time that was killed by her father? or uh, from her father to Johanna, 
you know, it, it could it could relate to a lot of different things, but I, I just thought that that was weird, the significance of that song and, and the title of it. Um, don't you think, Lucy? Yeah, yeah. Anthony, do you have the clip of that? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. Um, let me play. It's about a minute and 30 seconds, and um, you'll hear again, it, we're, we're doing the spirit box session, and then all of a sudden you'll start to hear this, I get this melodic musical tone in the background, and then you'll hear, hear our conversation about it. Huh? Is it terminal? Nothing's on there. Like it's. I don't want to press it because then I want it to go away. Yes. Yeah. You want to stop that? Shut the stairs back off a little bit. Stop. It's a stop. How do you stop this, Jim? Hold it down. Yeah. I have to unlock it. Did you just play with the thumb? That was amazing. That was fantastic. That really was. Um, I don't know, Anthony. I don't. I don't know what you think, but Bobby Mackey's has turned in probably to one of my favorite places ever, and just the things that have happened to us there just. Um, the connection I feel with Wanda, everything. I really cannot wait to go back there. I I, I don't know. I, what about you? I mean, it, it it's it's amazing. Yeah, I I um uh, I I fell in love with the place, and I actually didn't think I would, and maybe it was because of the experience that I that I experienced the first time that I was there with the scratch, um, and I I didn't get into this story, but. Um, after I had gotten scratched that first time, um, and uh, Wanda had mentioned this in the beginning when we were talking to her, that uh, I I fully well know about the sort of you know uh, ghosts attaching to them to to you um, after you leave the place. And after I had gotten scratched and left Bobby Mackey's and went home, I um, if you don't mind, Lucy, I wanted to sort of tell this story a little bit. Yeah, please. Um, when we we had left and we went back home to our, our you know respective homes, I, I I certainly didn't feel as though that there was a spirit around or that I was possessed or, or anything like that. I I did though have a feeling as though um, I can equate it to sort of like a heavy feeling and or a foggy feeling. That's actually a better description. Um, my mind, I felt, was not my my mind that I had before I went to Bobby Mackey's. I was, uh, my thoughts were very foggy. I wasn't concentrating as much as I did before. And I had a, a, a bit of bouts with some bad luck for two weeks after that. Um, I had issues with my car breaking down. Um, I had issues at work. Um, uh, just you know, fighting. I was I was irritable. I wasn't. I just was not feeling myself at all. And it got to the point where I it I I knew that there was something wrong. And I don't know if I could relate it to Bobby Mackey's or not. But I knew that there was something different after I came back from the place. And after I think I was talking to you, Lucy, I, I guess I had decided. You know what? I, I have to sort of 
get out of this and, and get out of the funk. And I basically just stood in my living room and said, whatever's around me, whatever is here, just get out. Just leave. I don't want you here. You're not welcome here. You're not welcome with me, around me, nowhere. Get out. And I um, I said it with such a vengeance in my tone to, in, you know, in, in the hopes of getting rid of whatever it was, you know. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. But I just felt at that time that I needed to do that. And um, funny enough, the next day, I felt better. I felt as though, you know, my head was clearer. I can think like uh, I was before um, – before I, we when we went into Bobby Mackey's, I just felt lighter, and um, that was a first for me. I, I didn't know how to deal with that, and as paranormal investigators, you really should try to understand the the um, and I think they call it not possession, but it's sort of oppression. I think it is. I think that's what it's called, and. Um, it, it, it's it's a low level sort of entity, and we discussed that in our last show about paranormal investigating. How it sort of distracts you, <clears throat> or sort of disturbs what you're thinking uh, or your thoughts, and makes you do things that you don't normally do mm-hmm. or think things that you don't normally do. But it's not technically like a possession. And um, I, I mean, it was like a light switch, Lucy. You know. And I, mm-hmm. I don't remember talking about that with you, but it was a light switch. The next day, yep. I feel much better. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and just for our listeners out there, I mean, as you can see, both Anthony and I have had this kind of experience. Mine with the seance, him with Bobby Mackey's. So to go back to the last show, just one of the things that that we had mentioned: if you feel like there's something there, say it out loud. Tell them that they need to go. You know, it it, it sounds like a simple little thing, but it really does work. Um, So, you know, on that note, um, Anthony, I think it's time that we close out the show. You know, we had such a great time tonight, and the best part was talking to Wanda Kay. You know, I'm so glad we were able to talk to her and have her share her stories with all of you. We hope that you enjoyed it, too, Um, just to get across about how much that we really do enjoy Bobby Mackey's. Anthony, I want to thank you as always, and I want to thank everybody out there for listening. Um, Anthony, why don't you let everyone know what our next show will be about? Sure. Uh, But before I do that, I I just want to let everybody know that uh, I'm probably going to be posting some of the videos that we took, uh, little snapshot videos of our investigation at Bobby Mackey's on our Facebook page, Paranormal Review Radio. So, If you are not a friend of the page or haven't liked us, um, head over to Facebook and go to Paranormal Review Radio and just um, check out some of the videos that uh, I'm going to be putting up there. I think uh, they'll be pretty interesting. I actually put the video of the uh, scratching that I got and uh, some of the other video videos that we had taken in the place. I think it's just uh, it's just an amazing time, and I, I highly recommend if you can, going out to Bobby Mackey's. You know, we talked about Rolling Hills Asylum before as, uh, you know, one of the destinations that you should hit if you want to do paranormal investigation, and Bobby Mackey should be the second. Um, or, or, or either either or, you know. Go to Bobby Mackey's and then Rolling Hills, but I think you should hit those two places. Those two, I think, are the most active that I've ever gone to and um, are not disappointing at all. Um, so, Lucy, next week, um, or actually on our next show, we will be discussing the theory of time travel. Ever wish you could go back in time to spend one last moment with a friend or relative that has passed on, or go back in time before you made that most horrible mistake in your life? Well, we're <laughs> going to discuss the possibility of time travel. We're going to review some evidence that is currently out there, and discuss what some say will be the future of time travel for all of us. As Lucy said, thank you all for tuning in tonight, and we hope you enjoyed the show. And I want to thank Wanda Kay again um, for a brilliant and beautiful interview that uh, she did with us. We love her for it and can't wait to see her again. And for all of you out there, please check out her website again, WandaKay.com, and uh, go get her uh, book, 
I Believe in Paranormal Things, and check her Facebook page out for her upcoming book that's going to be coming out. So come hang with us next week. Okay. Good night, everybody. Paranormal Review Radio.